I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about acidity. I want to talk about everything that comes along with acidity. This could be indigestion. This could be gas for some people. This could be excessive belching or burping. It could mean stomach cramps. It could be abdominal cramps, uh, cramps for some people. It could mean seeing undigested food in your stools every morning. It could be feeling tired after you finish every meal. For some people, the symptom could be feeling this heavy feeling in your chest when you're eating your food and you feel full, but you're still hungry. You know, everything starts in the digestive system, your gut, your stomach, everything in the human body. That's like the central processing unit of your body because that's where we put in raw material in the, in the form of food to break it down into energy. All that energy is raw material that needs to go now to all of your blood and all of your organs to basically build your immunity, to heal you, to repair your wounds, growth of new cells, cleaning out sick cells from your system, detoxification. Everything happens in this central point of the body. Now it's unfortunate that a lot of people who suffer from acidity think that they have too much of acid inside of them. We need to understand exactly how the digestive system works if we want to basically handle this problem because there are just too many people out there who pop antacids every single day for immediate relief. Now you should take it if you have a problem, but you should also know that it is the number one cause why you're not getting better and why you end up having more digestive and gut issues. You see, uh, most problems with digestion is not caused because of excessive acid in the stomach. It's caused because we have less acid in the stomach. Now today, most people are trying to move on to this whole fad diet of trying to be too alkaline and less acidic. We need to understand that there are several parts and organs of the body that need to be alkaline and some of them need to be acidic. So if you try to make your entire body alkaline, you're going to have innumerable problems in your gut and your stomach. You see, the stomach is meant to be acidic. If you go back to the pH, school, the pH scale in your biology or chemistry books back in school, you would notice that seven is neutral, one to seven is acidic, and seven and above is alkaline. Now the stomach needs to maintain an acidity pH of one to 3.5. That is extremely acidic. You need to have the right amount of acid in your stomach for the right reasons, and we're gonna discuss that right now. Number one, most people are on this protein fad where they think that more protein in their system is gonna give them better bodies. Absolutely true. If you have more protein, you will have more muscle. If you have more muscle, you will burn more fat. But the problem is people are going on overstuffing themselves with protein and they have extreme digestive issues. The number one thing we need to understand that it is not about how much protein you take. It's about how your body metabolizes and breaks down protein into amino acids and then absorbs it. You see, it's all about absorption. You could be eating all the protein in the world, all the superfoods in the world, but if you're not assimilating and you're not digesting and absorbing what you eat, it's practically useless. So number one, you need the right amount of stomach acid to basically stimulate the digestion and breakdown of protein, which is why a lot of people who start overstuffing themselves with protein have a lot of gas, they have a lot of bloating, they have a lot of indigestion. This is your system telling you that you are not breaking down protein the right way. So either you cut down your protein intake or you improve your digestion. So we're gonna talk about how to improve that at the end of this. Right now we're talking about you need the right amount of stomach acid to basically stimulate effective breakdown, assimilation, and absorption of protein. We have an enzyme. You see, everything revolves around enzymes and cells in the human body. You need the right enzyme to break down and metabolize protein. That's called pepsin. Pepsin is present in your stomach, in your digestive system. And the right amount of stomach acid will stimulate the enzyme pepsin, which is a proteolytic enzyme, to be produced. When you produce that enzyme, you will break down protein into amino acids in the human body. So if you have less stomach acid because you're constantly popping antacids, okay, you're not gonna be generating this proteolytic enzyme that will further help you break down protein the right way. We have something called an intrinsic factor in your stomach in your digestive system. This is a kind of a glycoprotein that is essential for the absorption of vitamin B12 in the body. One in two to three people today have a deficiency of B12 and that's dangerous because we don't understand that having a deficiency of B12 over the years can lead to many issues like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. It's not the only reason, but it plays a huge role in your mental health and in your nervous health. So basically your nerves, you need B12, your brain, your memory, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. It is critical to maintain your B12 levels over the years. Once you get this, and then if you try upping your levels, it's a very, very slow healing process. So we need to make sure that we have the intrinsic factor. 
A lot of people go on taking vitamin B12 shots and popping B12 supplements, but again, their levels fall. Why? Because they don't have the intrinsic factor in their digestive system because you have less stomach acid. So when you have the right amount of stomach acid, it stimulates the intrinsic factor, which in turn helps you with the absorption of vitamin B12 in your system. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, it doesn't matter if you're vegetarian, it doesn't matter if you're non-vegetarian as well. It is a myth that only vegetarians and vegans have a deficiency of B12. We see the same deficiency in non-vegetarians as well. It all comes down to your intrinsic factor and how well your digestive system is working. One of the most important points of the right amount of stomach acid and pH level of your stomach is it sterilizes your food. You need an acidic medium to break down bacteria from the food that we eat, germs, things that cause extreme stomach pain like H. pylori bacteria. That's found in a lot of people and it messes up the entire digestive system. Then you get bugs that lodge themselves in the mucosal lining of your stomach and we get cramps and abdominal pain and we need to take severe medication. We get gastric issues because you don't have the right amount of stomach acid. You don't basically, you don't basically protect yourself from the amount of bacteria and pathogens and germs that come into our system through the food that we eat. When you have the right amount of acid, you will kill all of these bacteria, pathogens and germs. The right amount of stomach acid also stimulates your liver and your gallbladder to produce bile. Bile is what helps us to break down fat. So sometimes when you find yourself overeating junk food, sugary foods and foods that are rich in oil or deep fried foods, you get this nausea, you get this tight feeling in your chest, you get acid reflux and all of these problems because your stomach acid was not able to generate the right amount of bile, which would in turn help you break down the fat in your system. Now, acid reflux, we need to understand that acid reflux is a serious problem, okay? Because why I'm saying it's serious is because your esophagus, this is where you have your acid reflux, okay? It's a very thin tissue. And if you keep having acid reflux, this acid is going to destroy the tissue and membrane of your esophagus, leading to a lot of problems, including esophageal cancer. So we need to make sure that we don't have this kind of reflux. Now, how do we do it? Not by popping more antacids. By popping more antacids, you're reducing the amount of stomach acid. We need stomach acid. When you have the right levels of stomach acid in your stomach, it basically contracts your esophageal sphincter. This is a muscle that closes the gap between your stomach and your esophagus. So when it contracts, it doesn't allow acid to be thrown up your esophagus. Now, if you have less stomach acid, guess what? That sphincter opens and that's why we have acid reflux. So if you have the right amount of stomach acid, it contracts that sphincter and it doesn't allow the reflux to happen. Now, right below that, you have a pyloric sphincter and your stomach acid, when you have it in the right quantity, it will open this to allow food to pass from your stomach into your intestine. Now, most people, because they don't have the right amount of stomach acid, the pyloric valve or the sphincter doesn't open up. And that's that heavy feeling that you have. The food is slowly fermenting in your stomach and it is unable to push through into your intestines. It does it at its own pace. By then you're producing acidity, you're producing gas, and it further reaches your intestine in an undigested manner. So this is exactly what happens in your stomach. Now what happens is related to the health of your gut. Everyone's looking for solutions to their gut. They prop, they pop probiotics, prebiotics, thinking that their gut's gonna get fine, but it doesn't get fine because it's a whole series of problems interconnected with each other. Now, if you have less stomach acid and your body's not gone through the proper breakdown of protein, you have undigested protein molecules that force themselves into your intestine and you have your gut wall. These acidic pieces of undigested protein irritate your gut lining. Okay, and because it irritates your gut lining, it inflames your gut lining and you start producing small little holes in your gut and these protein molecules enter your blood. It's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be in your gut, assimilated and pass out of your system. Because it enters your gut, your immune system wakes up and starts attacking it to protect you, the natural defense mechanism of your body. And that's what we call autoimmune. That is what autoimmune is. So when you find your TPO, your antibody count in your blood on the higher side, you know you have a gut issue and your solution is your digestive system and your gut. And your gut because you've got to reduce the amount of antibodies in your stomach and then you bring your immune system automatically back to what it should be. Now, furthermore, that's not the only issue. Because you have undigested protein molecules in your intestine, you make your pancreas work in overtime. You stress out your pancreas to produce more enzymes to do a job that should have been done in the stomach. So you see it all starts in your stomach and it goes right down into your gut. Now you have a bigger problem. You have malabsorption of vitamins, minerals, B12, 
nutrients from the food that you ate because you have an inflamed gut. So you have malabsorption. You may be eating the best food in the world, but like I said, it's all about how your body absorbs food. And because you have an inflamed gut caused by the irritation of these acidic protein molecules, you're not even absorbing food the right way. What do we call that? It's called a leaky gut syndrome. Now in your gut, you have a colony of bacteria. You have good bacteria and bad bacteria. We need both of them. But when you have an inflamed gut and all of this acidic protein in your gut, the bad bacteria starts growing more than the good bacteria. That's a condition called SIBO. That is basically your small bacterial intestinal growth. This is the bad bacteria that's overgrowing in your gut. Now this bacteria pokes more holes in your gut lining, allowing more flow of protein molecules into your blood. It makes you gassy. That bloated feeling that you have is all of this bacteria, which is an overgrowth, trapping in air, trapping in protein molecules. Now you have an imbalance of bacteria in your system. So you have bad breath, you have body odor, you have flatulence, you have excessive belching. And because your gut is completely out of whack, you have low immunity. Because what happens is with poor digestion, we have inflammation. With more inflammation in the body, you deplete your body's natural store of antioxidants. If we deplete antioxidants, that's meant to protect us. We decrease our immune system. So you see immunity is not just about eating pumpkin seeds and moringa powder and sipping on coconut oil. It's about getting your gut in place because you have the right gut health. You have the right immunity. Your immunity starts in your gut. There's no other way to look at it. You look at your gut, you look at your digestive system, you look at all of these symptoms, and that's how you heal your gut. Now let's get straight to how to improve your stomach acid level in your system. So basically lemon water again, when you have like lemon water 30 minutes before your meal, you stimulate the production of, of uh, stomach acid. Now if you go back, if you're a non-vegetarian, you, know, you see in Western countries where they eat meat, they have, this, they have this habit of marinating the meat in a vinegar medium. They could use apple cider vinegar, they could use rice vinegar, you could use any kind of vinegar. Why? Because vinegar helps you break down protein into a more digestible form. So when you marinate your meat, it cooks better and you digest it better. Now you can have lemon water or you can have apple cider vinegar mixed in a glass of water 30 minutes before your meal. Half the world thinks that apple cider vinegar helps them to lose weight. It's not true. Apple cider vinegar improves your stomach acid, which in turn improves your digestion, which in turn improves your gut health. And because of that, you lose weight. It's as simple as that. So you can have apple cider vinegar or you can have lemon water 30 minutes before your meal. Fresh ginger is fantastic for you to generate good stomach acid levels in your body as well. So you could finely chop vinegar, uh, sorry, not vinegar, ginger. Now you can make it into a tea. My favorite digestive tea would be a little bit of ginger. You mash it, you boil it in water, you put a little bit of cardamom, which is a lychee, and a little bit of anise. That's called bishop's wheat. They're like small cumin seeds with a slightly pungent taste. You boil this together, it stimulates acid in your stomach. And you have this about 30 minutes before your meal. So if you're not doing apple cider vinegar, you can do ginger, you can do cardamom, which is a lychee, or you can do anise seed as well. You can make it into a concoction, or you can even chew the seeds raw to stimulate your digestive system. Coriander is fantastic, cilantro, it is fantastic again. So when you look at traditional Indian wisdom and food, you have chutneys which have coriander in and it's served with your meals to stimulate your digestive acids in your stomach, which is why you look at synergy of food. You look at what accompanies different foods because when you have the right synergy of food, it is automatically built to basically stimulate the right acids that you need in your stomach. The water rule. Do not drink water during your meals because you dilute the amount of acid. And if you already have little acid in your stomach, you are further diluting your stomach acid by drinking more water. So the rule of thumb is have your water intake 30 minutes before your meal and then right up to, un until you finish your meal, 30 minutes later is when you can you know, have your water intake post that. During your meals, you do not want to sip on water. If the food's spicy, maybe a little bit of water because you need to understand that your food is also cooked in water. So it does have water as a medium already going into your system. And then we have fermented foods. You have fermented foods. If you're not vegan and you eat dairy, you have your yogurts, which help you to stimulate your digestive enzymes. You have your pickles, your fermented foods, your fermented cabbage, your kimchi, your sakra, your kombuchas, whatever your fermented foods are. Fermented foods also help you stimulate the right amount of stomach acid that helps you with digestion. And then there are certain lifestyles. Eat your largest meal when you are relaxed. 
When you are relaxed, that's in the parasympathetic nervous system that is rest and digest, you are able to produce more stomach acid automatically. If you're in the sympathetic nervous system, where that is fight and flight, your stress mode, you cannot produce the right amount of stomach acid. So never eat when you're stressed. If you're having the largest meal, eat it when you're the happiest, when you're most relaxed, when you're with friends, when you're with family. Eat, but don't overeat. Because again, when you overeat, and you have less stomach acid, do the math, you understand what problems you're gonna create. So stay away from overeating. Overeating is not necessary for us. Eat whatever you want sensibly, but do not overeat food. And finally, we have the biggest cause of this problem is antacids. Now, few people have to be on antacids when they're going through heavy medication because the side effect of many medications causes acidity. So you may have to take antacids for that, but make sure there are natural remedies like what we discussed that can also get you off those antacids. But if you have bad lifestyle and you think you think that you can get away by constantly popping antacids to compensate your overeating, your your the gaps between your meals, the odd eating hours, eating junk food and stuff like that, you are going to mess up your digestive system. And by now you understand how extremely important it is to maintain your stomach, your intestines, your gut and everything because everything in the human body, including the way you feel in your mind, your anxiety, your stress levels, your emotions, it is all controlled mainly by the gut. That's called your enteric nervous system. It is the second brain of the human body. So you invest all of your efforts in keeping a healthy gut. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. You can't just take out the gut and say, I'm gonna do probiotics. It starts right from the time you chew your food, goes down your stomach, it starts in your stomach. So if you have a gut problem, you start healing your stomach and you move all the way down to your gut. And that's how you look at the human body holistically. It's not a car end, it's not a car, it's not a machine where you take out one part, you replace it with another part, or you just look at that part and repair it. You have to see that everything in the human body is interconnected with each other. And that pretty much covers everything to do with your digestive system, your gut health, whatever you're going through in terms of the symptoms that we mentioned in these notes. Simple lifestyle changes. And believe me, if you're on antacids for a long time, the first thing you want to do is work very hard to get off antacids. Because if you're on antacids, you're in this vicious cycle of producing less stomach acid. And these are all the problems you're going to have. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, one more point. The more you chew your food, digestion starts in the mouth. So you send pre-digested food to your stomach. So if you have less stomach acid right now, for example, you can start making that change right now by chewing your food longer and longer. Because you chew your food, your body may be able to manage with that little stomach acid you have. But if you send out undigested pieces of food because you're not chewing and you're eating too fast, your body's gonna need more acid, which it doesn't have right now, and you're gonna have all the problems that we just spoke about. Have a great day, everyone.